Hello, welcome back. Hope you had a nice weekend. Monday today and we're going to be taking a look at a very trendy company, Micron Technology. And uh, semiconductors being the thing these days, obviously, because everybody wants, uh, wants to have a few in their homes. <laughs> a very, very popular industry. So we're going to be taking a look at Micron, which is a company that I wanted to add to my portfolio a few years back. I think it was around 40 back then. Never really did. Got, uh, got, got absorbed into other companies. I mean, you cannot buy everything, can you? But let's take a little bit of a closer look at this company, which is paying a dividend of uh, 0.49. Seems to be low, but we will still examine the payout ratio later. And the outstanding shares over here, you will see that uh, they are kind of increasing and decreasing. So company used to decrease a little bit, then uh, actually buys back some shares, then issues a little bit more, then buys back a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird situation, but um, overall it's increasing, not great. Uh, it's important to at least bear in mind that that's the case. That, now, that's that's not a deal breaker, but it's uh, important to understand that the, the company sometimes likes issuing a little bit of uh, uh, extra shares. So that's not great for diluting investors that already hold the stock. Take a little bit of a closer look at the PE over here. You will notice that uh, the projected one, again, it's this is projections, so maybe a little bit optimistic, but it's projected to be 8, 8.3. This is very low uh, for a company of that caliber, of course. And I'm actually surprised to see to see it being that low because the company is at, uh, at its almost all time highs, very close to it at least, 81, 82 almost. And um, the PE is still uh, very low. So that's very, very interesting. It's like the market cap keeps increasing. PE goes down. That's very nice. Seems like they're making good money. Let's take a look at the dividend. Uh, the dividend payout ratio is negligible, so we're we're not going to <laughs> we're not going going to discuss anything more about that. I mean that's obviously very very sustainable. It doesn't doesn't move the needle at all. And um, let's take a look at the income statement. The year over year growth seems to be cyclical a lot, as you can see, like some sometimes uh, going down a little bit, but overall increasing. I mean, it, typically it seems to be increasing. But uh, there, there are some negative years. Okay, same for the gross profit. And uh, at the end, the most important thing here, the net income, yeah, had a little bit of a hit here. I'm assuming this was there was some sort of a write off. Oh, actually, sorry, that was an increase. The decrease happened here. There must be some sort of a write off or something like that. You could always examine the very very details of a company if you really need and want to, and it's probably a good idea. But um, I kind of want to make them um, to have a process in which I examine a company and very, very quickly understand whether it's a potentially um, a good buy without having to you know, spend a week <laughs> reading through all its financials. But if you really want to, you can, of course, take a little bit of a closer look at uh, where the money is going for and coming for coming in from for a company. But now, right now, you can basically see here that the typical net income of the company is about five to seven billion dollars, pretty much. Maybe they sold something over here that could have happened. So let's take a look at the balance sheet. And um, we will notice over here that um, let's take a little bit of a look that the total liabilities are eh, fairly, fairly, fairly normal here. When you compare them to the total assets, you would expect something of that sort. And it's nice that they don't move too much. They're about the same, I guess, I guess about 15 for the most part. But um, the total equity uh, very nicely keeps increasing very, very nicely over here, despite some negative growth years. So that's good to see. Companies balance sheet seems to be increasing the equity. I, I love to see that in companies not having decreasing equities because that matters a lot, of course. And um, take a look at the cash flow, at the cash flow, cash from operations, uh, 8, 17, 13, 8, 12, 14 little bit all over the place here so uh, the company seems to be having yeah some cyclical, cyclical nature obviously and you could you could kind of expect that from such an industry but uh, overall they, they make good money i mean some years could be worse than others but let's take a look at how this is used actually so the cash from investing over here companies investing a lot, a lot and i like to see that as well although they do have high capital expenditure so that's expenditures for maintaining themselves basically and uh, uh, that's about land equipment and all things of that sort to make sure that the company operates nicely. And these are excluded from uh, operating income to derive the free cash flow. And so the, these are high expenses over here. And this is why I'm assuming yeah, the net cash flow, the free cash flow is going to be less in some years. Yes. 
so still making 3.5, 8.5, 3.5 over here it's, it was balanced, I guess they didn't make that much uh, in operations, yeah it was 8 compared to 13 or 17 that's much less than their normal it can happen 2.4 and 3.8 over here so if you average those years out maybe exclude this one because that's um, that's the odd one out I don't think that's uh, that's expected to happen maybe not ever again really and so let's say that the company makes about what like 3 maybe 3.5 billion if you give it a multiple of uh, 30 you, uh, if, if, if we say that the company makes 3 billion we give it a multiple of 30 we arrive at um, 91 billion dollars which is the current market cap about so it's interesting that the PE is actually not following the cash flow here and uh, it paints a different story and this is why I like examining the free cash flow because uh, now you know that this, the, this is a company that has, a high, that has high capital expenditures important to know and uh, could affect uh, you know your valu valuation for the future so uh, with a multiple of 30 you may say that this is actually a little bit overpriced actually instead of underpriced so if you comp if you examine the PE that's why I'm not a huge fan of the PE now the total debt to equity going down and down company has practically zero equity zero debt over here total liabilities to current assets yeah this is also this is also fine so and I'm pretty sure you'll see the Altman Z score that's uh, yeah very normal over here. All right, very nice. So yeah, this is uh, a 25% uh, liabilities to assets. So I have a lot of a lot of a lot of cash to be able to repay a lot of assets actually to be able to repay any potential debt anyway. So yeah, what am I doing with uh, Micron? This is when we are reaching our final step, deciding what we want to do with the company. Do we want to buy it? or do we want to wait or sell it or how would I treat that so uh, I do I do like the company and I would buy the company a um, couple of things that's important to to know and realize uh, again if you take a look at the cash flow it is a little bit overvalued when you compare it to the P actually and um, company seems to be increasing some shares sometimes like issuing some shares so dilute, diluting investors a little bit that's not great and they seem to be go to be a little bit here and there when it comes to gross profit and margins and all that. Uh, however, they are still making ton of, a ton of money and I love the fact that they are increasing their balance sheet numbers in terms of their assets at, uh, the, at the end. So that's, uh, that's great to see. And uh, I would buy the company. Obviously, I would like to get it at a lower valuation if possible because that would uh, kind of, you know, make it... Uh, make it easier for me to make some money back get a, a better return on investment uh, I, i'm not a big fan that the company is trading at that high of a valuation right now at high that high of a price really not a valuation because the valuation is probably probably close to fair really maybe maybe slightly overvalued but um i i always like to buy stocks when they are kind of down a little bit so if i could if i could have bought it over here that would be great now here i kind of want it maybe to go down here now if it goes to towards 70 i think that's a, that's a very nice trade to make and hold it for the long run potentially so i do like the company though so i could see somebody entering and making money uh, for the long for the for a long term hold because the company seems to be doing very well and uh, again i like the fact that they are they are having they're, in, they're adding assets to their portfolio uh, every year, basically, and uh, the free cash flow is always positive, and that's also so, something great to see. It's a little bit overvalued if you if you get a multiple of that. So yeah, bear, bear, bear those things in mind, and uh, if you decide to uh, get into the company, if it's possible, try to get it at a little bit of a lower value, a little bit of a lower price, really, because the value is the same. So thank you for watching this. I hope you liked the video. If you did enjoy this one, you may want to take a look at uh, this video that I made about I made about Shopify. And actually, a lot, a lot of people have watched that. It seems to be getting some popularity. And um, in the meantime, please take a look at uh, our Discord Discord channel, a channel that I created in which uh, we can talk about a lot of sort a lot of different uh, investing topics, uh, whether that's um, uh, stocks, whether that's funds, um, dividends, all sorts of things. 
We already have some people in there. We are having some nice uh, discussions. So I would love to welcome you as well. And uh, hope you enjoy it again. I'll see you in the next video and have an awesome week. Bye bye.